The Legion of Boom is considered one of the greatest defenses that ever hit the gridiron together. This defense dominated opposing offenses for nearly a decade, but how dominant were they? This is the topic that we will discuss today, so let's find out why the Legion of Boom is always thought of as one of the best units of all time. Before we dive into how great they were, we also have to talk about how in the world the NFL allowed them to form up in the first place. And as always, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to help the channel grow for more future content. Well, it all started in 2010, during the NFL Draft. The Seattle Seahawks drafted Earl Thomas 14th overall, Walter Thurmond 111th overall, and Cam Chancellor 133rd overall. These weren't highly drafted players either. Thomas was the first rounder, but Thurmond was a fourth round pick with Chancellor being a fifth round selection. The following offseason saw them bring in CFL cornerback Brandon Browner in the offseason on a three-year deal, and they had another excellent draft class that year. Seattle drafted KJ Wright with the 99th overall pick, Richard Sherman at the 154th overall pick, Byron Maxwell at 173rd, and Malcolm Smith at 242nd. For those that want to know the rounds in which these guys were selected, Wright was taken in the fourth round, Sherman was a fifth round selection, Maxwell a sixth round selection, and Smith a seventh round selection. Once again, these aren't highly touted players in the draft, yet Seattle just saw something in these players that nobody else did at the time. This group of players transformed the secondary. That first season saw them call out a bunch of players, including Richard Sherman shouting that AJ Green was an overrated receiver. They made headlines and started to become a pretty strong unit overall, but they weren't done building yet. Seattle drafted Bruce Irvin 15th overall, Bobby Wagner in the second round at 42nd overall, and then Russell Wilson in the third round at 75th overall, all of which came in the 2012 draft, the third straight event that saw Seattle haul in at least three starters. The season that these guys were added on, everybody started to nickname this defense as the Legion of Boom. In 2013, they were able to put together a stellar season. They allowed the fewest passing yards and the fewest passing touchdowns out of anybody in the league that season. Sherman racked up eight interceptions and led the league in that category, while Thomas and Chancellor pitched in to make Seattle the interceptions leader that season. They marched their way throughout the entire season and into the Super Bowl against the Denver Broncos and Peyton Manning. The game was expected to be an unbelievable matchup between the Broncos' record-breaking offense against the newly formed Legion of Boom. What ended up transpiring was a blowout of epic proportions. Seattle held Denver to just eight points throughout the entire game. They intercepted Manning twice, forced two fumbles, and dominated from start to finish. It's not every day that you see a Super Bowl end up being a 30-plus point route. The following season, in 2014, Seattle was equally as dominant. They marched into a second straight Super Bowl that year and deserved to win had the team not thrown the ball at the goal line against the New England Patriots. Ignoring that collapse, though, Seattle became the first NFL defense to allow the fewest number of points in the league for three consecutive seasons. They not only allowed the fewest points again, but they also allowed the fewest number of total yards that season. They were also the first team in league history to allow the lowest number of points and yards in two straight seasons in a few decades. The previous team to accomplish this feat? That would be the Chicago Bears from 1985 to 1986. This Seahawks group didn't allow a single 300-yard passer in any single game throughout both the regular season and the postseason in 2014. To further put these two dominant seasons into perspective, we have to dive deeper into more of these games from both 2013 and 2014. In 2013, they dominated the St. Louis Rams to just 9 points and 158 total yards, with Maxwell grabbing an interception. The Rams didn't score a single point until there were four minutes left in the game as well. They also stuffed the New Orleans Saints in the divisional round, holding the team without any points until early on in the fourth quarter. The Saints did storm back into the game with 15 points and 400 yards of total offense behind Drew Brees and company, but it wasn't enough. They still lost that game and Jimmy Graham was limited to just one catch for eight yards. In the following campaign, they had a lot of injuries early on in the season. One of their biggest games was a dominant 19-3 win over the Cardinals. They allowed just three points and 204 total yards on the night with a Maxwell interception. This was the start of a strong six-game winning streak, a streak which saw Seattle allow an average of just 6.5 points per game. 
Not to mention, they allowed fewer than 250 total yards in every single one of those games. Ironically, the week after their 19-3 win against the Cardinals, they were able to beat the San Francisco 49ers 19-3. The 49ers had just 164 yards of total offense. This was Thanksgiving night, and Sherman racked up two interceptions off Colin Kaepernick. Oh, and this wasn't even the most memorable moment against the 49ers in the Legion of Boom era, as one of them came in the NFC Championship game when Sherman broke up a pass to Michael Crabtree in the back of the end zone with 20 seconds left to seal themselves a trip to the Super Bowl. That was when he sounded off in one of the most iconic interviews in NFL history. Richard, let me ask you the final play. Take me through it. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. Don't you ever talk about me. Iconic moments were being had almost every other week in the Legion of Boom history. One time, Sherman came out and said that he was Optimus Prime right before they were about to play against the Detroit Lions and Calvin Johnson as Megatron. Sherman locked down Megatron to three catches for 46 yards that night. Chancellor then, later on, started a trend in the NFL that is still going on to this day when applicable. He randomly jumped up and over the center of the offensive line to get in the backfield and block the field goal. He did. He gets back there and he blocks it. It's wide. Did he get a piece of it? Unbelievable. We get a there was a penalty called against him, but the fact that he could do it at his size put fear into opponents' hearts every single time that they lined up to kick a field goal. Later on in that game, Seattle snagged a 90-yard interception return for a touchdown against Cam Newton to cap off a stellar divisional round victory. Then, of course, there's the time that Sherman went ahead and told both Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless on ESPN's first take that he was, quote, better at life than them, particularly Skip Bayless. Do you I'll, think I'll you're like better than Darrell like Revis is right now? In my, in my 24 years of life, I'm better at life than you. Okay. So let's, All right, that's let's fair. Get, let's All get, right. let's get down right. well, to let's, let's, stay, let's not get personal here. I just no, want to no, know, it's not, it's do, not you, do you this think you're better than Darrell Revis is right now? I'm better than you. We should also note that these guys weren't recognized as the Legion of Boom for just a few seasons. They were terrorizing opposing defenses for nearly a decade. It's just that we got the best indication of how phenomenal they were as a unit during the years that we've talked about already. These were the years that made people not want to go and play football when they saw they had to take on the Seahawks. They made life less enjoyable for every single offensive player lining up against them, and the numbers have certainly backed that fact up. All of these dominant performances allowed for some pretty amazing accolades to follow their defense. Sherman was a five-time Pro Bowler, three-time first-team All-Pro selection, second-team All-Pro selection, NFL interceptions leader, and a member of the All-Decade team. Chancellor was known as the hardest hitter in the league for some time with four Pro Bowl selections as well as two second-team All-Pro selections. Thomas, on the other side of the field, had seven Pro Bowls, three first-team All-Pro selections, two second-team All-Pro selections, and another member of the All-Decade team. Brandon Browner made a Pro Bowl in 2011, and K.J. Wright was a Pro Bowl member in 2016. Cliff Avril made a Pro Bowl in 2016 as well, and Malcolm Smith was the Super Bowl MVP. Bobby Wagner is an eight-time Pro Bowl selection, six first-team All-Pro selections, two second-team All-Pro selections, and a two-time NFL tackling leader, and a member of the All-Decade team. Then finally, there's Michael Bennett with three Pro Bowls and a Pro Bowl defensive MVP. I mean, seriously, the accolades drag on forever. The Seahawks had so many players with such immense talent that it's so difficult to imagine all of these guys on the same roster for multiple seasons. Just their secondary alone was enough to terrify people. Sherman, Thomas, and Chancellor were unbelievable in the secondary. These three started a total of 81 games together on defense, ranking second in the league for secondary trios that have started games together. These Seattle players combined for 16 Pro Bowls, six first-team All-Pro selections, and were ranked number one of any other secondary trio in league history in the seasons that they were starting together. Pro Football Reference also dove into their approximate value when they were starting together as well. This is essentially a number that represents the quality of each player's contributions to the team and includes their accomplishments during that span. Thomas, Sherman, and Chancellor had a value of 212, higher than any other trio of secondary players in league history. When you take a step back for a moment and think about the level that they were playing at for these years, you would be just shocked. 
What makes it even more impressive is that almost every single one of these defensive cornerstones was selected through the draft. This was a stellar defensive unit that got built almost entirely from the ground up and without having to dish out millions of dollars during free agency. Seattle went through years of allowing the least number of points and yards per game. In 2012, they allowed 15.3 points, 2013, they allowed just 14.4 points, 15.9 points in 2014, and 17.3 points in 2015. These are numbers that you wouldn't see in four years from any other team. And with that being said, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, see you next time.